about those a little bit. A few books devoted to not just uh, modern day science, but to the traditional science of Australia's custodians. He's going to do a little bit of an acknowledgement to country. Usually I do it, but he's going to do it for us. Yam everyone, which is hello in Gimilaro, which is my language. Um, my family are from the gate, which is known as Walgut. And um, I'm here on Gadigal country. And um, this place is really special. Just because, just over the harbour here, there's a really awesome, um, on Camaragal country, there's a really deadly astronomy place. Our people were the first scientists of this land. We were the first astronomers. If you've ever had uh, bush uh, tea tree oil, it's called Baralam in, um, in Bundjalung, and that is a bush as a blackfella medicine. So um, I want to pay my respects to all the elders, ancestors, and all Aboriginal people joining us today. Um, it's really deadly. I'm really excited to be here. As a deadly scientist, this is a form of chemistry that we're doing right now, and um, I'm very excited. So I hope you're excited. So you guys excited? Super excited! Thank you, Corey. Osmosis thank you. Big Kev and get excited. Thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. We're going to be doing <laughs> a, a kakadu plum flavoured candy today. Kakadu Ooh, plum kind of being a native Australian oh, flavour. But if you just go and we're going to put a picture yeah. of the Australian Start Aboriginal flag around, yeah. in the centre. Where that little line is. Like yeah, just keep fixing it. In the it's going to be beautiful. As Rafiana Dahl would say, that it's unbelievable. We're going to be doing a fair bit <laughs> this year around so uh, Indigenous issues so in Australia. Good way to do it. Yep. Is you kind of want to get get into the candy like this. Oh, yeah. get get in. Yep. Yeah, 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 not just on the surface. Get right in there, aren't you? Can get right, right in there. Yeah. Up the I market. don't want to destroy the candy. That's the candy. You're not yeah. going to destroy it. Trust no, us. It's pretty hard to destroy this candy. Hey. We'll look Where after you, Corey. We'll look after you. Guys, you got to remember when there's a will, there's relatives. Huh. <laughs> oh, I, can that. I can actually personally attest to that yeah. myself. How excited is everyone for some deadly science? For some deadly science. We can talk about science. If you have any questions about Australia's indigenous population, the science that they uh, practiced before we got here and ways in which they still practice those traditions today, please ask. We'd love to talk about it. This, we're going to put a picture of the Australian Aboriginal flag. There are two Indigenous flags in Australia. There's probably more. Sorry? Yep. Am I right there, Corey? Are there only the two Indigenous flags, or are there more? No, no, no. Flags? So there, um, there is the Torres Strait Islander flag, which is yep. in the north of Australia. Which we've, I've got some candy over here, which is the same colours. Uh, that is green, black, and white, and blue. And we've also got the Aboriginal flag, which is black, yellow, and red. Um, so, so red, black, and yellow. Yes, yeah. yeah, so there's the yeah. two. So, um, and yeah, it's a pretty symbolic flag. It was designed by Harold Thomas, um, who's a really famous Aboriginal designer, which is really, really cool. And um, recently... Recently bought back from ba uh, Wham Clothing. Recently just bought back from Wham Clothing and is now a property of the Australian government. And hopefully... Um, it can be used for generations and 25 still, million bucks yeah. well spent, I reckon. 25 million, that's right. But I think, um, you know, it, it was a, a small price to pay to actually, you don't need to get too much of yellow in there. That's all right. Yeah, it'll be fine, we'll make it work. Uh, I can give you those. Oh, it's right in with the oh, one more. new candy maker. So, Corey, what I'll get you, I'll get you to do this. Yep. Yep. Just be gentle here, because it's easy to swoop this everywhere. Yeah. But with, this is citric acid that we're adding here, which will really bring out the uh, the flavour of our kakadu plum. Yep. Give it a kind of tang, and you just want to mix that in. So I'm going to give you that, but just gently. Yep. So um, for a job, I used to be an animal technician, and we used to um, work with genetically modified mice for research. And um, and we used to actually have to be really finicky to do stuff like this. So I'll try and be as gentle as possible. So just just as a little bit of background, and yeah. speak up because these microphones are cool, but they're not super they're not great. great. But like uh, just as a little bit of background, what what do you do now? What's your you, you were saying you're an associate professor at Western. Where are you? So first I've got to tell you how I started out. So I grew up in a place called Dapdo, which is down in the Illawarra region. Oh, Dapdo. Dapdo. Known for Dapdo dogs. The Dapdo dogs. And um, I was always that kid picking up lizards and snakes in the playground. So um, if you guys know of any, um, any kids that pick up blue tongue lizards, I was that kid. And I dreamt of being a zookeeper because I idolised a um, herpetologist called Harry Butler. And, um, Who didn't love Harry Butler? That's, that's going right. back. That's going back before your time, though, isn't it? No, because um, when I was young, I didn't have a lot. So a lot of um, a lot of the books I read and stuff were like Harry Butler and Doctor Harold Hogger. What about uh, Les Higgins, the Bush Tucker Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I loved Les Higgins as well. And um, actually, I I left school at sixteen and I went to this place called Boy Upbrook in Western Australia. Yeah. And um, 
I came back and I worked at a zoo called Shaw Haven Zoo, um, and then I end, um, some things happened in my life where it was pretty sad, and I ended up um, shearing our packets for a bit. Shearing our packets. Yeah. Packets are pretty awesome. Are they lovely animals? I always think oh. they're like camels. Do they, they spit at you? They do spit, but they're, they're actually really beautiful animals. They're really sweet. I love our um, packets and llamas. And then I worked in an animal shelter where I met my wife. So, you know, don't need Tinder, don't need Grinder. You can meet people um, in animal shelters, which is really great. But I started Deadly Science back in 2018, um, and I worked at um, the Matilda Centre at the University of Sydney as a researcher. Yeah. And I researched mental health and um, substances, and I created some culturally appropriate evidence-based resources for Aboriginal people um, who suffer from addiction, uh, which is an illness. And that's what I did as my science career, um, as well as working as an animal tech and a lab tech. And then I ended up um, starting Deadly Science, so now I do that full time and I write books. You do that and write books. We're going to show you some of those books in a little while. But before we do, we just need to play with our candy. This is your bit of candy. Oh, thank you. So what you can see, you can see where it's been on the table. It's yep. formed this crust. And you can actually touch it and play with it. Where it's a liquid, we don't want to touch that yet. No. So it's we're just hot. doing this. And we want to fold it. We want to sort of fold it in on itself. Just be careful about getting the liquid on your gloves. It's, it won't hurt you because you're wearing gloves, but it will make your life a little bit tricky. I did so yeah, see. just. Uh oh. That's what I was. Just, that's like exactly blue. what I was just saying. Oh no! I should have listened. That's so. all right. <laughs> don't, don't don't wait that's wait wait wait. Because if you touch the liquid bit. Yeah. Okay. No, so no, what so you can do, see if you reach under. Yeah. Oh, oh. Where it's been on. This is a cooling table that we're working on. So where you want to touch it is where it's been on the table, where it's a liquid, you probably don't. So what you're going to do with your gloves, stick it in and then pull it out quick. I did see. Oh, there you go. I did That's see amazing. Story that you had a little thing on your, um, your Instagram for your um, 4,000 followers. Yes, I would love to, um, to get more kids, um, a bit like you guys. Uh, reading my books because it's really important that we learn about all forms of science um, from all different backgrounds because if I wanted to show you what a scientist looks like I'd have to show you a mirror because scientists come in all different shapes and backgrounds all shapes and sizes and um, anyone can do science and Aboriginal people have been doing science for 65,000 plus years um, and I really want you guys to be able to read my books if you got them in school um, you probably have them in your library which is pretty awesome so what we're going to do, and I'll, I'll actually just show you this. This this is uh, Corey's book. Have you guys seen Maybe that one? Science, the first scientist. Oh really? Wow. And by it, um, it is a charity. The funds go to closing the gap and helping Indigenous kids close the gap in science education. So we we're all the this this batch of candy is about six hundred bucks worth of candy. We'll be making this and we'll be donating that money to Corey's charities. But they're very easy to find. What are you on Insta? Deadly um, Science. Insta. Um, you can find me on my Corey Tut Instagram and Deadly Science as well. Um, and you know what the most important thing about Deadly Science is? If kids, if you want to make a difference and make a change, whatever that change might be, you might be really passionate about cleaning the environment or um, science yourself, um, anyone can really start a charity and make a difference. So you can always start small, you don't have to always go big, and um, remember, from little things, big things grow. We actually, we actually came in contact with Corey a couple of years ago when Annabelle won the People's Choice in the Young Achiever Awards for... Uh, for, I think it was 2020, 2021? 2021, 20, 20, yes, yes. Uh, and Corey won, what did you the win? Indigenous Achie Young Achiever of the Year. Indigenous Young Achiever of the Year um, Award. And now being 30 and a rugby player, uh, young seems a bit too far seems away. Seems like, yeah. Right. <laughs> so we're going to move off this table now. Okay. Just take, hang on, wait, this Ooh. one, let me have a video. Yep, that's about right. Uh, we're going to tell Lachlan that we're moving off this table, so we move this over to here. I'm going to cut this in half, but neither of us need to work too hard. One of the nice things about science is it teaches you to be smarter, not work harder. Got to get a little bit of the red. Uh, yes. But also, that's the red. Yes. Let's take that. Alright, so for anyone who did just join us live on the stream, we are making our outdoor flag. No idea. We've got Corey here talking Hello. about. Um, that, science, deadly science. That, and then we're going to take this, and we're going to do like this, and we're going to mix this much white in here. Oh, amazing. That. All right, now this is called satinization, what we're about to do. We're going to take this candy, and we're going to stretch it. 
We're going to do it in two halves. Corey, you're going to come with me. Okay, yep. And I'll show you what to do and then you're going to give it a go, okay? Okay, thank you. Essentially, what, we do, what we're going to do is pull this into long, long strings that go really bright, shiny white yep. as the light starts to reflect and refract from the candy. There's a bit of science for you. There's heaps of science. It'll go bright, shiny white, but yep. it'll also go, it'll aerate, so it'll be kind of crumbly. Oh, wow. So what you want to do, pull it on the hook, and we go it. Are you right-handed? I am right-handed. All right, perfect. So if it goes here, the left hand goes about two-thirds way up, and you just throw it over. The secret is to be grabbing the candy right here, right at the bottom. Yep. Here, but like right down the bottom. See so yeah, that moves Hands come right. together and give it a stretch. Yep. So you ready? You good to go? All right. Just ignore a little. There you go. So you go like that, and then you know, Oh, sorry. Okay. Right here. You're holding your right hand. Yep. Left hand. Oh. So yep. you like you kind of curl. Left, right. Left hand. Left hand. Yeah. Okay. Got me. A little bit counterintuitive. Sorry. Like that. And then no. Oh. No. Right. No. Okay. Sorry. You can't. You can't get it wrong. But here. Yeah. Between your hands. Oh, I see a loop that I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. You ready? Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. No, you're doing great. Thanks. There you go. I look Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is awesome. I so, no. Yeah. Over. And down. So, there. Yeah. Pull it between your hands. It's like skipping rope. Oh. All right. Alright? Frustrating as hell. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but all of a sudden it'll click and you go, oh. So it's just here, two hands over the top. So, so here, and then over the top. So, yeah. Now left hand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh. And you go down, and then left hand, and then. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep, except what you, you want to be bringing it together. Oh, yes. Yep. I see that. Yes. Oh, there you go. That's incredible. And how did you learn? Anyway, that, that's do done this? now. That's done now. Vic might do the other half for us. How did you learn how to do this? Oh, I can't even remember now. How did I learn? The Danish man taught me how to make the Oh, That's incredible. So, the Aboriginal flag, can you tell me about the, 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 the design of your Aboriginal flag, so why it is with, what it is? It starts with a black sky, um, and it's designed by Harold Thomas. The black yeah. sky, the red land, and the yellow sun, yeah? Yes, that's right. Um, and, it, and again, like it was, a, um, it was designed as a protest because the Union Jack and the um, this current Australian flag doesn't really represent Aboriginal people that well. At um, all. At all. And um, so, like, it, it's, it's really fascinating because um, Aboriginal people have this really amazing form of astronomy. So for the Gamilaroi people, we have the dinner in the sky. While you're talking, just, we want to fold this so the white and the red all get mixed together. So you yep. just go like this and like this. Have a bit of a go at that. Oh, cool. Um, fun, I, I, have a, I have a vision <laughs> of seeing the Union Jack in our current flag yeah. replaced with the Aboriginal flag. It'd be really great. So, <laughs> I think um, it's it's really important that um, that kids learn about Indigenous astronomy because there's so much that goes into it. So things like predicting the weather, um, predicting the seasons. So the Garuga and Sky, the Dinner in the Sky, is a Gamilaroi and Radjuri um, form of science. But um, when the season changes, it tells you when the animals are nesting, when they're running. Um, so Indigenous people right across the nation use the stars to navigate and. Um, and hunt and, and tell them different things. They can also use it to predict the world. Beautiful. Like now, yeah. we just want to make sure yeah. that these two bits of candy, our black and our red, yeah. are exactly the same size. Okay, so I've got to... If you think about the flag yeah. you've seen before, the black and the red, almost exact. Exactly. I've just estimated that black, but let's yeah. see how close I got. Close. We're going to do it by our eye, but we do want them to be exact. Oh, there you go. It's as exact as you can do it by eye, but I think, what do you say, do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon it's, it's, it's probably a little bit longer on the red, but it's about roughly that. So it's Not so, we're just worried about the amount of candy to start yeah. with. So I reckon that's quite good. Cool. We've got our red, we've got our black. This is going to be the sun. Yeah. Okay. So what I'll get you to do, we want this to be perfectly round. Perfectly round? So, yeah. so we don't want it to, as you roll it, it'll want to get longer. Yeah. It's a, in, technically it's still a liquid, yeah. yeah, but it's a very viscous liquid. So you just don't want it to get too long. Yeah. So we don't want it, we just, but we want it to be perfectly round. Once 
one of the things about candy is it's nice to form and nice to yeah. work with when it's soft, but it doesn't hold its shape if it's soft. So yeah. once we get it to where we want it, we cool it down a bit. Yep. So when you're happy with what you've got, I'll get you to take it over to the table and just give it a roll on that table and cool it down into that perfect cylinder. And then meanwhile, I'm going to do you're this. You're a pro, you're a natural. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm going to do this. So where are you going from? You can need my help there. Um, oh, there you go. Pretty, much, pretty much okay. Oh. Oh, that's deadly. Nate, off we... Can, can I, I add, can I... Slower, Corey? Sorry? Otherwise, if you... Oh, it's got to roll. Want, if it's not rolling, oh. just bring it back. It's perfectly round. When I say round, yeah. not like China round. If you imagine the flag, it's got to be a circle. So we want yeah. it to be perfectly round. We don't yeah, need to pull yeah. that anymore. That's good. So just keep it a bit of roll. Yeah. And you're actually thinking about it being... We don't want it big in the middle and small on the end. Yeah. We want it to be perfect cylinder all the way. Sorry. Still learning, guys. <laughs> uh, the word deadly. Deadly. Yeah, we actually um, we actually have the similar um, similar origins to the Irish. So um, the, words, the Irish will, um, have words that are normally negative in the English language. Right. And obviously, a lot of Irish people moved out to Australia, um, and you know, a lot of, um, you know, created a lot of the Aboriginal people as well. Um, and that's why we use words deadly. And um, English words that are negative um, have a positive. Um, sort of connotation in indigenous I culture. really love it that yeah. there's a word that has been not appropriated but shared and collaborated on and it means something to our indigenous community and I, I love the way deadly is used. Essentially it's used... That's right. Yeah, yeah it <laughs> It's deadly, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially it's used as awesome, yeah? Yeah. Like that's, yeah so I think that's... deadly science is awesome science and um, like I started it in my spare room by sending books to remote communities, STEM books, and then it, um, I started a GoFundMe page. I took up a second job as well. My wife right. thought I had a gambling habit, um, <laughs> but I did not. Um, and, you know, it's grown into a charity that supports over 800 schools across Australia now. Um, by providing STEM resources um, to remote communities. I need your son. Sorry. So need a couple of now. people are asking, um, uh, will these lollies be part of something on a website or how can I contribute? You'll be able to, th this oh. batch of candy, like, you can go to Deadly Science, where are we? You can go to Deadly Science uh, and contribute directly, but all the proceeds from this we will be donating. So if you just buy a bag of Aboriginal flag lollies this week, all the money will go to Deadly Science. You don't have to do anything really except buy lollies if you don't want to. And if they want to but check do out the website, you. it's... Uh, deadlyscience.org.au And um, you can follow us on Instagram, you can follow the prompts. Um, I will be buying a bag of lollies, not because it's going to Deadly Science, but because they are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> These are Kakadu plum flavors. So essentially, that is that's our, our flag. That's our flag. That's amazing. And, um, that's, that's and I'm, our, yeah. I'm super happy with that as a shape. Nick's hey, going to help you out here because we, we want this to be exactly this shape. We see you, Will. But we want to cool it down so that it, it holds its shape while we assemble it into one giant lolly, yeah? That's so, incredible. Nick, if you want to come over this side with Corey, essentially it's about taking a mental photograph right now <laughs> and focusing and thinking, I want this to stay exactly this shape. But I want to cool it down and get it really quite hard. Yep. Yeah. So we'll give that to me. I'm going to show you. Who? G'day, Will. How are you, brother? Yellow. We've got our black. So, my wife. Do you stop bullies? Yeah, we've got a no bullying policy. Be nice, people. No bullies. Bullies are losers. Oh. I, uh, you might not believe this, but when I was growing up, people wanted to punch me in the face all the time. They still do, don't you? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, I get you, but no, I've got no time for bullies. Yeah, yeah bullies are the worst. Oh, bullies are the worst. So we now need to make that's that rectangle into a cylinder. Do you to Deadly, look at him go. Don't don't stretch it out any yeah, longer. Sorry, stretch out too much. Mental photograph exactly like it was. Yeah. Yep. It's looking good. It looks it looks pretty cool. Eh? It looks pretty deadly. It's deadly. Does anyone have a favorite animal? Uh, I've got a favorite What's animal. What's your favorite animal? Cats. I love cats. <laughs> no, I don't. Cats are the worst. Cats. Uh, Oh, cats are 
that's incredible because um, you know, for example, a tiger. Why does a tiger have black stripes? Well, um, you might think camouflage, uh, but actually it's an insect repellent. So if you think of like bees, for example, have you ever seen bees swarm out of a hive but they never run into each other? Well, there's one thing that tigers and bees have in common. Do you know what that is? Black, black stripes. It's black stripes. So they have this built-in um, sort of bugs that actually can't see black lines. So um, tigers um, and zebras are actually have an immunity to bugs. I mean, it's like an insect repellent. So that is just, so cool. I feel like cool. I've learned something. I just learned today. something. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Um, and the way that the lines work is that they actually, because they're so different, and right. yeah. no one tiger has the same Ready? stripes, it yeah, actually yeah. makes but the tiger. I don't think that's how they're going. Good. Than what it actually is. So it could be running, but to the naked eye, it could be walking. Roughly that long from now. Uh, any other favourite animals? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. A puppy. Puppy. So dogs are incredible as well. Uh, and during the COVID-19 pandemic, they were training dogs on how to smell COVID, um, which is pretty incredible. And um, some dogs can actually smell uh, different types of cancer. The dogs are really incredible. Um, they can't speak, obviously. Okay, Nick, that would be cool enough. Do Let's do so it. So many different body language cues. Maybe they lift their um, lips up or they lift their ears up. They can do so many different languages just in the one motion. Um, so. Even us as humans, we can't really give as many body language signs as dogs, so they're pretty incredible. And the other side. Yeah. Uh, Shabina's saying, hi, I remember when we had a deadly side excursion at our school a couple of years ago. Amazing. Uh, yeah, look, uh, you, spend, you spend quite a bit of time in regional communities. Still? I spend a lot of time in regional communities. I go to schools all the time. Um, I actually wrote a new book uh, two weeks ago, and I wrote it purely on the back of Qantas Link planes. So if you ever catch one of the planes, you can actually write books on planes. It's pretty cool. And it's called This Book Thinks You're Deadly. Um, it's a celebration of all the Aboriginal people out there. Because um, obviously, as Australians, we know Goodsy, we know... The we, actually, we actually have one of these we're going to show you. You might know Amazing. some quite a famous Indigenous so Australians. But there yeah. are a lot more than, than immediately come to mind. So this it's an awesome little book. I've, I've had a look through. We were flipping through it. It's Everyone great. from Stan Grant to... Have you got, have you got a couple of choice favourites in there? You can't play can't favourites. Play favourites. You know that. But actually, my favourite part of the book, um, I, in, I spoke to Uncle Jack Charles before he passed away, which he was really deadly. He was really awesome. But I'd um, also, at the back of the book, you have this option to get asked deadly scientists out there, kids, why they're deadly. So they can be in a book with Captain Freeman. So you can get the book and you can actually put someone's photo in there. And we encourage you to write something nice in there. Um, because uh, in a world where the information is going to be cheaper, actually the world's quite negative. So we need to get back to saying really nice things about each other. Um, help us get through this pandemic and stuff. So in the back of the book, you can actually find a page where you can actually give it to someone as a gift and you can tell them why you did it. I think that's really important. That so. is awesome. The, the yeah. best thing you can do is just be nice to someone. Yeah, kindness is so free much and you have very little to gain from it. So uh, much this is deadly. But again, um, so I, I write science books because I really want kids to love STEM and animals and yeah, it's really important. Have you got a, have you, you asked the question, have you got a favourite Australian animal? Oh look, okay. It's, and, and, it's and, and, and why is it wombat? I actually really like death adders. Oh, and the come re on. The reason, the reason why I like death adders is because their name is spelled die, but actually their death is in part here. Because you go like this to a death adder, it won't move out of your way. And actually it's not an adder. It's it related to the cobra, which is not a lap, which is the front fan snake. So it's actually not um, actually an adder, and it's an ambush predator. And in Australia, we have a habit of renaming our reptiles after what we think they look like. So a brown snake doesn't always come in brown. It comes in black, it comes in white, it comes in yellow, it comes in all different sorts of colours. Um, so if we're going to rename the snake under kind of a European model, we look at Death Adder and go, short, pussy, slow snake. But it's actually not slow. It's the fastest striking land snake on Earth. And it's an ambush predator. And it has a little bit of a tail. And it can see in the can you, can you confirm for me, and, yeah. and I heard this fact, and I don't, I'm not, I don't know if it's fact, 20 of the world's 25 most venomous snakes are Australian snakes? Yes, but I'll tell you why um, snakes have venom. One, they have no legs, so they can't kick you. They also, they can all, but also they have, have very poor eyesight, so, and they have no arms, so they can't scratch you. So their only real defense against you is their venom, and the majority of the time they're not you. 
Um, and, and it's really interesting. So um, different types of venom does different types of things. So for example, tiger snake venom, if you were to put that in a liquid, a vial of blood, it would turn into jelly. So um, it actually is a blood clotter. And some of these um, venoms, such as venom from the Gila monster, which is one of only two venomous lizards in the world, is actually used as medication. So a lot of uh, venomous creatures actually, um, a lot of the blood pressure medications, a lot of the medications we take today that keeps alive, actually come from venomous species. Right, so what I'll do... So they, they serve a purpose. They well, I, I'm just going to stop you, Corey, because you've got work to do, man. I'm sorry. You've got work. I apologise. So just we've talking. now completed oh my God, it's amazing. our Aboriginal, and I'll just, I'm going like, to see if I can hold this up so everybody can kind of see oh what we've God. done. Wow. Yeah. It's about 12 and a half kilos, pretty close to 30 pounds, 12 and a half kilos of candy. Now, there's two jobs to do here. I'm going to Eat extrude this once. into rods. No, that comes no. at the end. <laughs> got to wait till the end. Are you guys going to have a race? Uh, uh, yes. I, I, we will have a race. I think mean, Nick, Nick has finally found someone he might be. I will, um, I will wreck it. Uh, you will not wreck it. You will wreck it. So, Nick, Nick's going to show you what to do. What you want to do is grab one of those cutters over there. I'm going to be extruding this into rods. There's a couple of people asking to make flags from other countries. Um, at yeah. The moment, yeah, of course, but at the moment this is all about um, our Indigenous flag, our Aboriginal flag here, but also our Torres Strait Islander flag, which we will make time as well. It is a really special week this week. It is NAIDOC week. What's NAIDOC week, guys? That? Uh, it is a little bit like a baseball bat, except Minus. this is now called spinning wow. the candy. You want to take it down from this very large diameter cylinder and you, oh look at the colours, so cool, deadly. We'll start extruding it. Now you watch closely what Nick's going to do because that's going to be your job. Oh, come over here. That's going to be your job. We're going to start by so, taking this away. Grab it. Yep. Now it seems soft. Just give it a tap. Well, well, explain. Wow. Um, Dave, do you want to let everyone know what, what? Madoff Week is? Uh, Madoff Week. Um, in 1955, yeah. there had been for some time a day of mourning for the Indigenous population of Australia. In 1955, it was kind of changed and uh, they decided to have a day of celebration of Indigenous culture instead of a day of mourning. And NAIDOC, which is the National Aborigines and Islanders Day, not organising committee, observance committee, was born and since 1975 there has been a week of celebration of indigenous culture in Australia. Uh, it seems to be getting more popular each year. I think people are embracing it more and more each year. NAIDOC week kicks off tomorrow, Sunday the 2nd of July. It's always the first week of July. So NAIDOC, it is NAIDOC week starting tomorrow. Get out and see some of the indigenous community in your part of Australia. Events happening all over the place, yeah? Whether it's music or stories or dance. Mark is on the table here. Yep. Are you going to just short right I can't do short Yeah, you can. Okay, about that long. Okay. And then you go up. Up the line. Yep. Will this be in a mix or by itself? We're actually going to sell these by itself. And what I'm going to do, this is, we're not going to make any money out of this. This is for Indigenous Science, for Deadly Science, for Corey. So if you buy a bag of Aboriginal flag lollies this week on our website or in the shop, we're going to donate the proceeds to Deadly Science. It won't be a huge amount of money, but it'll be some if everybody did a little bit. We've got a couple of international uh, audience members that are wondering, um, where can they get this book if they're not in Australia? Uh, you can get it from Amazon. Um, Amazon? You can email the Deadly Science website and we can put you in touch with the right people. So I don't know if you heard that, but Amazon, you can get it on Amazon, and you can get it on uh, Deadly Science website. If you, you can just Google Deadly Science. You can Google Deadly Science and send us a message through the contact position, and we can try and get you a... But well, Amazon will work it out for you. Amazon. Jeff Bezos will bring it around himself. Yep. Are you, are you close with Jeff Bezos? John says, I still no, don't understand no. how you mentioned so good after all that stretching. Uh, <laughs> we need help with the charity. Uh, you know. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, if you do happen to be watching, I I've just committed you to delivering all these lollies around the world. I reckon he could like seriously help a lot of charities and still like be rich. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you're all good. Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, I'll pull you a big one, Nikki. Wait one sec. Yep. 
Making candy is not as easy as you might think. Thanks for answering that one from the So um, one of the things that Indigenous science you guys should be proud of is that, you know, in Australia, we come from the country in this first step when they um, We have so many different um, inventions and innovations, such as these crafts. Um, you know, there's a thing called Johnny Cakes. Who's heard of Johnny Cakes? Anyone? So Johnny Cakes is Indigenous group. So um, a lot of groups, a lot of nations around the country, um, we come from a, a, a country, a continent that is more linguistically diverse than any place on earth. Um, for example, there's a place called Manigria, they speak 17 different languages. Um, and we have a lot to celebrate this country, and that, that is just as much my history as it is yours. And we should be proud of our first nation history because... Do you, do you speak... You, you speak English obviously very well. But I you... speak a little bit of Gamilaray. So I Gamilaray? say Yama Meligana means Yama friend. And, um, so teach, teach me a Gamilaray word. Uh, so Bigger Villa, which is um, a kidna. Bigger so, Villa? Yes, that's Bigger my Villa, a kidna. Um, so that is a Melian that lays eggs. And it's got a big Yama Villa. Yama Villa. Yama Keratin. Ah, keratin. Who said keratin? That was me. Oh, that was winner. me. I know my son. We're going to win a chicken dinner. And you know, um, my favourite thing about monotremes, and yeah. there's so much love about monotremes, is they don't, they, they young drink milk, but they don't have, like, mammary, but they secrete milk through their skin. So the next superbug medication might actually come yeah. from last two pills, because um, they have a really strong um, antibiotic microbial power, um, because all must be built all about immune system, and you can imagine their pouches are really dirty. Yeah. And um, so the next forms of medication and antibiotics will come from Australian animals because of how powerful and potent the peptides are in their milk. What, um, what Corey's talking about now is probably the two most extraordinary native Australian animals, which are marsupials, but more than that, they're monotremes. So they're mammals, but they actually lay eggs. Do you want to know my favourite echidna? Platypus and echidna. Platypus and echidna. My, my favourite echidna fact is that their, front, their back legs face the same way as their front legs. Um, and they do this because um, when they are laying their Sorry, their back legs face the same way as their front legs. Yes, and because when they're laying their eggs, they actually dig their nest in reverse. So you can keep an eye on predators. Sorry, is this platypus or echidna? Echidna. Echidna. So have a look next time. You know what I have over to kidna back? What's your favourite kidna back? They have like a four prong penis. Oh, there you go. So if you've ever Can seen... I say there's something to Google when you go home? A kidna penis? It's just been there. It'll give you nightmares. Uh, <laughs> it is terrifying. It is terrifying. You go, oh my <laughs> lord. So <laughs> poor lady of kidnaps. And just touch a culture with a comment after that, you guys make me hungry. <laughs> The most incredible thing, when um, when a kidna is free, they actually have a train, and it's very rare. So four males and uh, kidnas can follow a female kidna, and then they, they go in these little weird circles. Oh, sorry, they, they form a train, train on the... They form a that's, train. That's terrible. So, um, they... they People complain about me bringing the tone of this show down. He's talking about pulling a train on it. It's not dirty, um, it's actually quite cute. They, um, they follow the female around, and they do these little circles. I have to say, it is exciting. As long as it's consensual. Love it. Have you guys ever wondered how koala eat gumlies? So koalas are really interesting. They um, so gumlies are actually toxic to most animals. So they develop this thing called a microbiome, um, and they have this thing called a seed, which removes the toxicity. And young koalas, it's really interesting. They don't have that recipe um, on how to eat physically, so they actually eat a bit of their mum's food, which is called cat, and it's a special food, and it's really, really green, and it contains a lot of bio. Sorry, I, I just, I'm trying to hear you go, they, koalas eat their mum's poo. Yes, they have to, to eat eucalyptus sleeves, because um, you could, they need a... So they eat it once, bio. or every day they have a little bit of and mum's poo? It's only once. And it's a special food, it's uh, basically called PAP, yeah. and it allows them to develop a microbiome to uh, eat the toxic. 
And but I only have to do that once. I only have to do it once. So it means if um if any of the koalas get orphans, um it's really hard to actually hand read them. But um, there's a place called the Pool Macquarie Koala Hospital and they do a lot of incredible work and you can Google them, you can donate some of their charity and actually help lots of these koalas and they're actually breeding them at the moment. So um, Are they working with, uh, like, is it that chlamydia problem in the koala population? Uh, yes, and it's, it's not the same as human chlamydia, it's actually different. And well, because people were telling me that's how Harry Styles got chlamydia. That's not true, is it? He got it from Sydney, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so koalas are under threat. There's um, a lot of, you know, bushfires wiped out, I had estimated 60,000 koalas out of the wild, so um, unfortunately they are going um, extinct and we do need to have um, mechanisms in place to ensure that we've got koalas for the next generation. Really Sorry? Uh, to develop microbiome, which is like a recipe to break down the toxicity of gut um, in there, in there, it's, like a, it's a bit like a fecal transplant. Yes, very well, much yes, so. so. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. It's, um, it's very interesting, it's very interesting stuff. Um, when will this one be on the No, no, it's the it's, digestive piece. It's just the digestive leaves. Um, because eucalyptus leaves are not particularly nutritious. They're very hard to break down, like the cellulose, I think, is really. So there's different names for koalas in the different culture. We call it Bulla, Pinky Milleroy. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Willie might detect that. Well, so I don't think it is now. Koala leaves. It and might not be until a bit later on in the week. We'll get this online so as soon as we can. Water. They always hold my water. Uh, but if you buy the... There's some wonderful Indigenous stuff on our website at the moment. Some Native Indigenous Native flavours, an Indigenous mix with Torres Strait Island flag. But know that all the proceeds from this particular oil will be going to Berkeley Science. Love their work. I don't think he meant to do it, but Corey did just invite me to go fishing up in the Torres Strait. We'll go up and visit a school and we can bring up some... We can go and visit a school and learn about some Torres Strait Islander culture. It'll be really great. I would love, love, love to do that. Can I come? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, sorry, it's upside down. Black on the top because the black is the night sky. The black is the night sky. The red is the land. The yellow is the sun. What we're going to do, Nick's going to show you. Yep. So basically, bring some of the like rubbing your stuff earlier. Yep. Yep. You're pushing in front of that. It's a really good light. Yeah. All right. While Nick's giving Corey a little bit of a lesson over there. Food, if you'd like to try one, what I'll get you to do is meet me just over here. I'll give you a lolly and then you can move away and let someone else grab one, okay? going to split at an angle, yeah. but if you cut right there, it's going to, so you'll get W squared. Oh, man. Thank you. I'll learn this. Try holding it more like a pin. Yep. And not like the blade hold instead of the handle. Hold I'm very un You're a scientist. You're not supposed to be co when you're a scientist. But you're a rugby player. You are yeah. supposed to be co when you're a rugby player. I'm all, I'm all brute and power, baby. Brute and power. He is, he is a rugby player. Nice. You're looking alright. That's a bloody great average and save, really, I have to think. One of those moments we need a third lock. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know. Thank you. I can't really tell you. Thank you. I'll, um, I'll visit every time now. You won't get rid of me now. You're family now. Yeah, it looks really good. If any of the kids would like one of these little ones, like one of these big ones, you can have one, but you don't get it for free. You gotta tell me a joke or sing me a song or dance me dance or You got a joke? What's your joke? Who's that? I did I did a bird. What did sushi A say to sushi B? I don't know. What's up, B? I look forward to your Netflix special with great anticipation. Yes. Can it be a dad joke? Can it be a dad joke? Look at me, what do you reckon? Why look so good? These are the ones that are already prepared, they look like nice. Joe, you've got the best money, you don't believe me. Go on, Corey. Look at you go. I know. I, I when do I start my first shift? As soon as you want, man. Quite <laughs> honestly. It's all right. I gotta learn this. Thing. I'll give you a little. If you want to get fast, because I'll show. I'll show you what fast it is. Yeah. Go. Okay. 
just come on the other side. Oh, he's got a heat for one. Oh, my God. You should really be watching me. This is fast. Yeah, watch me. Don't watch me. But uh, the key is this is a yeah. really big movement. Yeah. Whereas this, in your wrist, is a really small movement. So, so you, get, don't, you avoid repetitive So I actually keep my um, absolutely yeah. still, and then it's kind of just your wrist going tap, 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 And you're doing four at once. Well, if, if, if you can do one, you can do four. If you can do one, you can do two. If you can do three, you can do three. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. So you go, and I'm going to give it back. Just saying, if you wanted to try getting a bit quicker, yeah. Either one, do two or three at a time, because it's, it's exactly as easy doing two as it is to do one. And then just try using your wrist to yep. And if you're trying to practice, go tap, 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 tap. Thank you so much. This is Joe Gabby here. Joe? Have you got a joke? You tell me a joke. Who's there? I love learning about uh, Aboriginal and Indigenous culture. No, no, no. Hello? Hello, Mr. Leo. Up the angle. Yeah, oh, sorry. And hold it at the back. At the back, up here. Yeah. Hi, Claire. Just don't scratch my bum, though. Okay. But someone who's just learned dirty for the first time isn't hard making dinner. Yes. <laughs> but I'm getting better, I think. It, it is a learning curve. It's all in the hands, baby. It's what we might do, Corey. Yeah. I might jump in and just polish this off because I, I want to have a final conversation with you about your course yeah. and about how people get on to do science. Yes, yeah, definitely. So if I just do, if we just rip through this last little bit. Uh, uh, in a rugby league or a rugby league, I don't know, I've been taught. <laughs> are you, um, are you, do you have a rugby league team? I do, I'm a Newcastle Knights fan. I'm a oh Tiger man, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, look, commiserations, uh, thank you. It's alright, um, I'm a Tigers supporter, so... But, you know, we, we, we beat the um, Hastings Vikings, which was like the local rival rugby team last weekend. And um, one of my teammates put up a post saying, oh, it was a clean sweep, but then they go, oh, no, our under-18s won. So I feel a little bit like them, because um, when I support the Knights, the juniors win, and I go for the juniors. <laughs> So one more time for anyone who's watching, and people might not be watching live, but these do live on these videos. If someone wants to learn about what you do, both in terms of uh, bridging the gap for young Indigenous people in STEM, or they want to look at some of the books that you've written and some of the awesome kind of explorations of Indigenous talent or native science, where do they go? Uh, jump on our socials, Google Deadly Science. Um, Look at our website, uh, buy our books. Uh, there's so many different places to go. If you Google Deadly Science, you'll unfortunately see my face, um, which, you know, it's an okay face, but, you know, deal with it. We do really great deadly work. Um, donate to Deadly Science if you can, every dollar counts, because, um, you know, we're, we're still building as an organisation. We're trying to get some corporate partners and some support because we, we work at 800 different schools. Uh, we send things like Lego books. Um, we have a program called Deadly Labs. We work with traditional owners to create um, traditional lab kits, so bush soap and things like that. Um, and the more that we get Deadly Science, the more support we get Deadly Science, the more chance of us coming to your school and helping you guys out as well. So um, any way you can help is really deadly and really great. And uh, it's really funny. Maybe. If you show them the front page of that, uh, Black Douglas, who won the Archibald Prize, did the design for the first time. I should say the, um, the illustrations are here. Epic. Come here. The, the yes. microphone's here. Oh, the camera's here. And we're going to say to everyone, and we're going to jump in here. Yes. That one. That one? It made me look like I have gingivitis, everyone, but I confirm I do not have gingivitis. Um, but it's great. Deadly science and. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about Australia's Indigenous culture and you want to support a charity making a real difference to kids on the ground in regional Australia, check it out, Deadly Science. This is Corey. Thank you. This is the Australian Aboriginal flag. It's Kakadu Plum. It'll be on cheap for sale on our website. But if you do buy a bag, he's going to get the money, not me. My kids need wine, but not that badly. I'd rather do something good with it. Thanks for coming on, Corey. Thank you so much. Thanks really appreciate it. Stay kind and clever. Look after yourself.